Gertrude Berg. I usually greet you from my window as Molly, with my you who remember. This is my new home, of which I'm equally proud. And I'm going to introduce you to your host very soon, and he's going to escort you through our wonderful new studios. I haven't seen them myself because I've been so very busy, but I'm going to go along with you, and you're going to meet many, many of the Dumont celebrities. <laughs> Brought to you by New York Telephone, a 9X company. New York lives on New York Telephone. And by Grand Union. Find all the special prices in the store with the new price finder for specials. And by Pampers from Procter & Gamble. America's mothers trust their babies to Pampers dryness. Welcome to a birthday party. This year, WNEW-TV celebrates its 40th anniversary of commercial broadcasting. 40 years of exciting, momentous, life-changing events for the country and for television, too. This is one of the pioneers of television, Dr. Alan B. Dumont. He developed the cathode ray tube, the television tube, which could be made inexpensively and would last more than a thousand hours, thus making mass-produced television sets possible. The first ones he sold in 1939 were a bit crude, with only four channels and hard to tune. But by the time of this one, the millionth off the assembly line, a gift to Dr. Dumont from his employees with silver Tiffany panels showing his important patents, they were well-engineered machines with the largest size picture of any set sold. Built-in record player, AM and FM radio, and a handsome cabinet. As the Dumont slogan said, the first with the finest. They need plenty of lights just as they do for a movie camera. Only with television, Lanny's image and voice are not put on film. They're miraculously transformed into electrical impulses and sent through the air. Supervising from the control room, Alan B. Dumont himself. In 1940, two years after Dumont had marketed his first set and had sold maybe a thousand of them nationwide, Paramount Pictures made a one-reeler to run between feature films, predicting their vision of the future of television. And so it, it featured Ted Husing, Lanny Ross, and a gentleman who was to become the distributor of Dumont sets for Southern California. The radio, they have to interrupt the program to let the sponsor talk about his product. But with television, the performer can go right on with his act like this. Oh, thanks for the memory of rainy afternoons, swingy Harlem tunes, motor trips and burning lips and burning toast and prunes. How lovely it was. Thanks for the memory. Simple, isn't it? What could a viewer watch? In 1944, CBS wasn't broadcasting because of the war. There were only two television stations on the air in New York. WNBT later changed to NBC and WABD, the call letters standing for Alan B. Dumont, which were later changed to WNEW-TV. Sam Cuff, a lecturer and newsman, 
helped the 4,500 New Yorkers who had sets to follow the course of World War II. 1944 was a turning point in the war in the West, with the Allies landing in Normandy, moving across France and into Germany. In the Pacific, Douglas MacArthur made good on his promise to return to the Philippines. And in that campaign, the Japanese, for the first time, made a kamikaze attack on our ships. But replacements were coming as the USS Missouri slid down the ways of the Brooklyn Navy Yard. I remember where I was. I was a merchant seaman on an old tub bringing ammunition to Italy. But even on those ships, we were reading that racy novel, Forever Amber. And on Broadway, the popular shows were Annie Get Your Gun with Ethel Merman and Harvey with Jimmy Stewart. Downtown at the old Wanamaker's department store, WABD built what was described as the largest television studio in the East, where shoppers could stroll by and look through the glass walls at the show business that was to come, television, and programs like Country Star, starring Peggy Ann Ellis. Our show was kind of a western and country style combination with square dancing. And of course it was live, as all those shows in those days. And black and white, and the lights were bright and hot. This is color because I had a friend shoot it on 16 millimeter film. We were all brash and terribly young in those days. I think our show was probably the first musical on television. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think one of the first that had a storyline every day. And of course, we had our little stock company of players, the sheriff, Gordon Dilworth, and Patty Adair, the dancer, and marvelous family feeling. We also had a very unusual happening when we were down at Wanamaker's. There was a severe storm one night, and we had a power failure. And in Alvey West Orchestra were a couple of wonderful musicians, Dick Hyman on piano, Bob Rosengarten on drums. So what did we do while everything was blown? We had a jam session, and it was great. Of course, that wasn't what we did on the show. It was country and western. But after all, you know, in the 40s and 50s, that sound was the big bands. A good time was had by all. If you can recognize my voice, not from a latter-day commercial, but from hearing me croon, a good time was had by all, then you can come on to my house. I'm Rosemary Clooney, formerly the girl singer. That's what we were called back in pre-women's lib days with the Tony Pastor Band. And we were on Dumont a lot. The bands were tremendously popular and were on Channel 5 for years, all the great ones. This is Carmen Cavallero. And there was Sammy Kay, Woody Herman, Benny Goodman, and his singer Francis Langford, the Dorsey brothers, Duke Ellington, Count Basie, Errol Garner, Dave Brubeck, Harry James, just about all the greats. And there were variety shows each week with more music. The Maury Amsterdam show was one. I sang at Maury's Place, the Silver Swan Cafe. Joe Sullivan was on the Cavalcade of Stars. Just a child. Why do you think I go around with men for? And who do you think I've got a little yen for? I was humming a tune. Freaking a good friend, Vivian Blaine. All of that orange colored view. Connie Haynes was on Cavalcade of Bands. Edie Adams on the Kovac Show.
Remember the singing groups? Before there were groupies. The Ames Brothers. The Modern Airs. And the DeMarco Sisters. Of course, there were the boy singers, too. Look at him. He really was a boy then. I think that the first time I appeared on the Amsterdam show was virtually my first television appearance. Maury was very kind to me. Uh, we're still great friends whenever we see each other. It's a, it's a, it's a loving embrace and a, a, a delightful reunion. And at that time, he was, he, he did an awful lot for me from a standpoint of uh, sort of beat the drums for me uh, as a singer and as a songwriter. And one of his favorite songs, apparently, was A Stranger in Town, which I had written in 1943. So when the time came to do the show, there was no question in his mind that he wanted me to sing Stranger in Town. It hurts to be alone with no one of your own when you're a stranger in your own hometown and we'll be back in a moment with an act of our own What's that, a different Grand Union price finder? Oh, Helen, yes, a Red Dot special price finder. It shows all the store specials. I don't have to look all over for them. They're all right there. Not only that, you don't wait for weekly food ads for specials. You get them all here every single day. Hey, I'll check my shopping list against this. I won't miss any bargains. Right, and they still have the regular price finder that proves their low regular prices. The regular price finder for low regular prices and the Red Dot special price finder for specials. ShopRite and Pathmark don't do it. Grand Union does. <laughs> Patty just found a terrific new diaper. Oh. oh, I know, Patty. It's her new Pampers, and they've really changed. Just look at that great new shape. <laughs> You're right. It's almost shaped just like a baby, and they stay so dry now. Patty can just about say bye bye to witness. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> she thinks it's because they're so much thicker now to absorb more and do stuff more. That's right. Her old Pampers couldn't absorb all this in a million years. But these new Pampers absorb more than ever to really stay dry next to baby's skin. And these wonderful new double elastics. You're right. It really fits nice and snug. Oh. Today's new Pampers, they stay so dry now, your baby can just about say bye-bye to wetness. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. most eclectic singers to be heard on Channel 5. And not to be confused with the boy singers, Mr. Robert Merrow. <laughs> and at the piano, Mr. Joe Raposo. Both of whom spent time with Channel 5. Bob, uh, WABD started carrying the Yankees in 1947. When did you begin singing the national anthem for them? Well, actually, uh, not then. I was, I was uh, you know, quite young. Yeah. No, at 67 I started. So it's 17 years now. That's wonderful. Because I've always...